I think someone's grilling some chicken outside. Hello. Today is the day I reassemble Mr. Dose. Hopefully for the last time. Confused what a Mr. Dose is? This is Mr. Dose. This playlist right here will get you all caught up. Before I get to work, real quick, yesterday I paid Charlie to come over here and help me for a few hours in the car, take care of a couple leaks and dumb things. I just wanted to get knocked out out of the way, but I am gonna show you what was done regardless. Ooh, I don't wanna get my hair on the dirty floor. If you notice right up in this area right here, my oil pan has been freshly repainted. The pag oil that leaked from the AC compressor took the paint off. That's fixed. I also re-wrapped the lines for the AC compressor with some DEI heat wrap. Looks a lot better than the crap that was on there that was all falling apart. And if you guys remember, I had an AC leak that I thought was coming from the AC compressor housing torquing because it wasn't mounted flush up against the block. That was not the case. What actually happened is the manifold block on the AC compressor has O-rings inside this little wafer section of that block that were leaking. I was able to replace all the circular o-rings however i'm being transparent with this uh the square one that came with my kit does not fit so i had to reuse old one so fingers crossed the square one does not leak it looked serviceable it protruded above the aluminum didn't have any nicks or tears in it so hopefully it was just the round ones because those looked pretty crappy that were in there homemade engineering solution to prevent these hard lines for the heater core from cracking in the future. I put rubber washers in between the brackets in the body of the car to help soften it or something. I don't really know. It just makes sense in my head that it'll help prevent cracks in the future. No wonder I couldn't get this rubber off. <laughs> Come off of here. This is no longer your home. Look at that. That was gross. No, did somebody make a glove dispenser? Because this is, I have a problem with gloves. Mmm, oh. vacuum boy. Never used this thing before, so uh, looks pretty common sense oriented. Take this thing and shove it into this filler neck over here. Ooh, it's chaos. Yeah, just like that. Here it goes. Oh, you leak. No, 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 no. Okay. This thing's probably still gonna leak. I put an O-ring on this little bleeder port. See what happens. I got a hair tie on the line so it doesn't scratch the paint. There we go. No! Why does this thing suck so hard? There's some tools that you can go cheap on. And there's some tools that... Hmm. It's okay. I got an orange funnel over there. Good morning, back to work. I filled the coolant system up last night, so I wanna see if it leaked. No pressure on the system, but nope. I borrowed some tools to do a pressure test on this before I go and put the fuel tank back in and to purge the air out of the system and to charge the AC. So first things first, what do we got here? It's for charging the AC. What are you? Ooh, that looks like a pressure tester. Before I forget though, this is going in the engine right now. I don't want to take any chances for stupidity. Oh my God, why did I put the thing on so tight? Ugh. I know this is a tiny funnel, but it's all I got, so. 
it's whatever. That's not even on the dipstick yet, so I got a lot more to put in there. The secret sauce for the 3S GTE is Rotella 540 T6. Plus aesthetic. There you go. It's 12 and a half PSI. Let's check for leaks. Everything looks dry. I think I'm good to go. Doesn't look like anything leaks. Coolant is filled up ish, still needs to be bled. Oil is filled up. Now, distributor. Need to put this back on, and then the tank is going in. Should probably put a little dab of oil on this. I don't want to insert it dry. Ugh, did I turn it? Nope. Is it in? No way, did it go in already? It's in. Now I just gotta set my timing. I don't wanna stick this heat shield back on here and have a bunch of crusty old lines behind it. So I'm gonna replace some of these hoses like this one before I do that. Yeah, this is vacuum. Get a nice piece of fresh silicone hose here. It's actually the same diameter. No, it doesn't look like it. Uh, cut away from you. If anybody in the comment section knows exactly what this is, let me know. It goes right between the engine bay and the fuel tank. It looks like some sort of a fuel cooler that all the fuel lines go through. I don't know why something like that would exist, but I mean, it's got like a heat sink that the fuel lines go through. It's weird. This is the last thing and the fuel tank can go in. There. The real challenge is gonna be whether or not I can get this heat shield back in here without scratching all this stuff up. Fuel tank time. This thing weighs almost nothing without any fuel in it. Super light. I, my guess is like 10 pounds, if that. Well, this is gonna suck. There you go. Yay! I got it! That wasn't that bad. This is not fun. I think someone's grilling some chicken outside. Why is it whenever I'm working on the car and I'm hungry, someone starts barbecuing something outside? It smells so delicious. Oh, there's so many brackets under here. I have to tighten up. This is gonna take a while. morning. Every bone, joint, ligament, tendon, socket, and chicken tender in my entire body was in pain this morning when I woke up. I've put in two 10 hour days now wrenching on this car in this video. I know it's hard to tell because it's like, what, eight, nine minutes into the video. I gotta see if this new fuel pump works before I go and button everything back up together fully. I hate doing the lower intercooler piping. Ouch! Face, go in your hole. Oh, lovely. Just where I wanted that. Down inside my engine bay. This bottom intercooler pipe is the bane of my existence. I didn't film everything I did yesterday for obvious reasons because I'm trying to make progress right now. So if there is a step that you wanted to see that's not related to the fuel tank, there's plenty of videos where I disassemble this car over and over again. Like the intercooler piping, for instance. Oof. I just sooner get this thing running and driving so I can start working on Sir Codsworth. 
this week because I have, my living room is full of parts right now for that car. If you ever have trouble getting intercooler piping on, my secret, I use quick detail wax. It dries once you get it on there, so you don't have to worry about it staying slippery. I still have to set the timing on the engine before I can like drive it. So as soon as I start this thing up, I gotta use the timing gun and make sure I get that timing set. Other than putting the X brace back on, it's all back together. Keys, keys, fingers crossed this thing starts. I'm not gonna let it run for long because I gotta bleed the coolant, still charge the AC and set the timing. I forgot my shift linkage is disconnected. All right, does this thing start? I hear the fuel pump coming on. It starts. It's all I need. It starts. <laughs> I'm so excited. I can't wait to drive this thing now. I still gotta do the boost controller and it's already like three in the afternoon. Sorry. I would have had this done already, but every time I take something off, I clean it and three other things near it before I put it back together. I can't help it. It's just the right thing to do. Ground source, power, cylinder number one. To set the timing, I have to jump TE1 and E1 in the diagnostic box because this is old school. TE1, E1. I still have to bleed the coolant system, so I'm gonna set this guy on hot and floor because I don't want it blowing in my face. Hi. Charlie's gonna help me so we can get this knocked out quicker. I'm gonna bleed the coolant, charge AC, and just get it done faster because I know you guys just wanna see this thing drive. And I do too. I wanna feel what it feels like with a bar of boost. One bar. Ah, ah, ah. This is so much easier if two people. <sighs> Oof. Okay, here goes. Last time I charged up the AC on this thing, I tried to let it sit under vacuum for like 45 minutes to an hour early ate lunch, and uh, it didn't hold that well, and that's because I had the leak at the compressor of those O-rings. And uh, we're gonna let it sit this time for like 30 minutes or so. Only problem is we can't really go off the gauges because his gauges leak at the fittings. Like yeah, these gauges lose a little vacuum just on their own. I've never been able to figure it out but it does it on every car, so it's not like a problem with your car. Yeah. These gauges just lose the vacuum. I don't... As far as the coolant bleeding situation goes, uh, it's, it's good. It's bueno. Let it run for like 20 minutes or so with the heat on and uh, nowhere bubbles. So that part's done. First charge. It's like shotgunning a beer. Kind of, sort of. Except right. that would probably give you a brain freeze. <laughs> Probably. Bled and the AC is now charged. It's six o'clock in the evening. I wanted to have the boost controller hooked up and be able to drive this for you all in one video, but I'm killing myself as it is trying to get this done in three days. I got this far, all I gotta do is hook up four vacuum hoses and the boost controller is hooked up. 
and then just put the center console back in. Will be one more video. I, sorry, it's so much work. You have no idea. I'm not even filming all of it. One more video, and that video will be basically just turning up the boost and driving it. So, yeah. I'm gonna go shower. I'm dirty and gross. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you soon with another video. Bye! <laughs>